What's up everyone, in this video I'll show you how to make this 3D website showcase in Adobe After Effects. Alright, so let's open a new composition, and being all organised, which I'm usually not, we'll give this a name of website showcase. And I'm using the HD 1920x1080 24 FPS preset, but you can use whatever's best for your project, and 10 seconds should be fine for the duration. Okay, first we'll add a background, which will be a 4 colour gradient, so we'll go to Layer, New, and Solid. Let's call this background. And it doesn't matter what colour we give this because we're going to come over to effects and presets and search for four colour gradient. And let's grab this and drag it onto the background layer. Okay, I'm going to use a mixture of the eyedropper and the colour board to make a bluey, purpley sort of gradient. Again, you can use whatever colours that work best for the project that you're working on. And you can spend a bit of time getting it to look spot on, but for the sake of the length of this video, I'm just going to quickly work through this. You can also grab these gradient points and drag them around to get super precise with your gradient. Okay, with the background layer done, we'll move on to the website animation. So we'll open a new composition with Command N or Control N on a PC. And I'm going to call this one Website, nice and original. And I'm using the same preset as before. Then we we'll grab our screenshot and drag it into the composition. And if, like mine, your screenshot's way too big, we'll select the screen grab in the timeline and press S on the keyboard to open the scale settings and we'll bring it down to fit the width of the composition and we'll align it to the top if you're not seeing these align options by the way you'll find it under window and align okay now on to animating the screenshot to scroll through the composition so we're going to be using keyframes and a bit of keyframe easing to do this so I'm going to move the player along by 10 frames by holding shift and pressing the page down key then with the screen grab layer selector we'll press P to open the position properties and we'll add the first keyframe by pressing the stopwatch icon next to position and you'll see a little diamond icon appear on the timeline. Then we'll move the player forward 20 frames, so hold shift and press the page down key twice. And it's the screenshot's y-axis, which is this second number that we want to add the keyframes to. So we'll drag the y-axis number until we reach the first point, and that'll automatically make another keyframe on the timeline. Then we want the position to hold for a few frames, so we'll jump forward 10 frames and add a new keyframe by clicking the add keyframe icon. That'll keep the position the same and give us a pause in the scrolling. Then we'll jump forward another 20 frames and again drag the Y axis to the next position. And move forward 10 frames and add another hold keyframe. And we'll do this until we get to the bottom of the screenshot or the point where you want to start scrolling back to the top. Okay, now we're at the end, we want to scroll back to the top. So after this last hold keyframe, I'm going to jump forward another 20 frames. And instead of dragging the Y axis value again, we'll come over to align and align top and that'll put our last keyframe onto the timeline. Then I want to trim the end of the animation so it returns to the start quicker and doesn't play all of this extra stuff at the end where there's nothing going on. So I'm going to jump forward another 10 frames, and then grab the work area end handle and drag it to the play head. So if we play it back now, it should scroll through the page, albeit a bit linear looking and shit. So to make it look like a more natural scroll, so starting off quick and then gradually coming to a stop, we need to add some ease into the keyframes at the end of each scroll, so every other keyframe. So we'll select each of these keyframes by holding shift and clicking on each one. Then we'll right click on any of the selected keyframes and go to keyframe velocity. And it's the keyframes income and velocity that we want to affect, so we'll drag the influence up to 100%. Now when we play it back you'll see it's more of a natural look and scroll. And completely optional this one, but you can turn on motion blur for the layer by turning on motion blur and then enabling it for the layer and that'll give it blur when it scrolls. I personally think it's a bit too much, so I'm going to turn this off, but it's entirely up to you whether you leave it on. Okay, I'm done with this part now, so we'll go back to our website showcase composition. Let's go back to the project window, and we'll grab the website composition and drag it onto the timeline, making sure it's above the background layer. Then we'll hit S to bring up the scale properties, and let's scale this down to about 60%. And then I'm going to turn this into a 3D layer, which gives us the option to manipulate the layer in three dimensions. So we can change the X and Y rotation and the orientation. You can also use the handles in the composition to change these two. So I've messed around with these settings until you're happy with the angle and rotation of your website animation. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is add a shadow to the website comp. So we'll come over to effects and presets again and search for drop shadow. Let's grab this and drag it onto the website layer. Then in the effect control panel, we'll increase the size and change the direction. Let's bring the softness up quite high. And we can drop the opacity too. 
and then I'm just going to trim the end of this animation like we did with the website comp. So I move the player the longer to after the website animation finishes. Then again, grab the work area end handle and drag it to the end of the player. And then let's play this through. So if you want to make the gradient colour in the background animated like this, then check out this video next. Back the like button if you found this video useful. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.